What up, what up, what up? It's your girl Free coming at you guys with another exclusive vlog. I'm in the lovely city of Los Angeles and I'm so happy to be bringing you an interview from Big Sad. Yeah. Say what's up to the people. Appreciate y'all for having me, man. You know, I love to chop it up. You know, update y'all on what I've been doing and how I've been feeling. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. All right, so is it Big Sad 1900 or is it just Big Sad? Big Sad 1900. Big Sad. Um, the 1900 is me really more being different because I looked, I looked on YouTube and I was seeing like um, Big Sad, hella random shit just popping up. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Sad quotes and shit. Like, I'm like, hold on. I gotta be, I gotta, I want them to, when they search my name, I don't want nothing else popping up. Right. Like, don't, you feel me, involve me. Right. Okay, so that is your full name. Yeah, Big, Big Sad, Sad 1900. 1900. Yep. Okay, cool. All right. So, get the people a background of who you are, what you do, where you from, the whole a, shebang. Man, um, shit, growing up, I used to stay I used to stay in South Central when I was a little bitty kid, born in South Central, moved to West LA when I was about six years old, been living in West LA my whole life, you know, small little community, Los Angeles Heights. Man, I'm really just a hustler, man. I'm just the average. Uh, I come from struggling and, you know, seeing my people and not really having nothing growing up, you know. So I had to get to it, kick those. I didn't did it all. God blessed me and, and gave me the talent to be able to rap and, you know, and be able to speak and have a voice. So, yeah, for sure. I'm just regular. I'm just a regular L.A. cat trying to get some money and, and do my thing. Okay, so you were born and raised in L.A.? Yeah, born and raised, yeah, for sure. All right, and name the area that you said. I know you said South Central, but what was the other parks? I, uh, when I was a kid, I grew up in South Central in the a Trade Gangsters, and, the, and then I moved to the Five One Troubles. And then when I was six, I moved to West L.A. My granny died, and my grandpa took us in. He already owned property in West L.A. And I moved straight to West L.A., the area called La Cienega Heights, like uh, by Kaiser Hospital, Cadillac and La Cienega. Venice and Los Angeles, all through there. Like, you feel me? Okay. And what what area is that? That's West LA. Okay. Yeah, West LA for sure. What um, what gangs and stuff are in that area? In that area, you got Mexican wise. You got Sawtell, Culver City Thresse, Venice Thresse. Um, what else over there? You got Drifters. Blackwise, you got the Mansfields, the Marvins, the PBGs, you got the Bio Cells, and then on the other side, you got the Gear Gang, Showline, Schoolyards, West Boulevards. Yep, that's some of West LA. So there's a few more hoods too, as far as like Mexican hoods. Like you feel me? But yeah, that's for the most part. That's what it is. Okay. And what was it like for you growing up over there in that area? Like, give us a background of what it was like for you as a kid. That shit was fun. I used to always go swimming. I used to go to the uh, swimming right there. Uh, uh, I can't even think of the name of it, but it's a swimming um, pool, indoor swimming pool right there in Midtown on West Boulevard and um, Pico. And then I used to go to the park down there, um, uh, Westwood Park, Pan Pacific. I was cool. West LA was straight for me. There's a lot of females. Man, if you a hustler, see, I'm a hustler. So for me, it was money. We right next to Beverly Hills. We right next to Santa Monica, Venice, the Jews, Culver City. We right next to everything. We five, ten minutes away from everything. So depending on what type of nigga you is, if you a hustler, you would love it. You're going to get some money, you know? You right. Get, if you if you were just a sit-around type of nigga, you probably not going to like it because it's not as fast as South Central. Like, you know, it ain't too it ain't too much action and shit going on. Like, you being South Central driving by, you see all type of shit going on in South Central. Right. It's not as fast. We got our shit like gentrified a little bit. You know, it's a lot of white people over there and Jews and different shit. So, but if you a hustler, you would love it. Like growing up, I sold crack. I had crackheads in Beverly Hills. Them niggas come and spend three, four hundred when they come buy crack. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it just depends on what type of person and what you was into over there. So, okay, wait, wait, wait okay, hold on. <laughs> wait, 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 hold wait, 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 hold on, hold, hold on. on. We going to go back to that because I heard it, but I didn't really hear it. We going to go back to that. But as far as the household goes, who were you more living with, like, around that time? I know you said you moved with different people, but who was the main person that you were with growing up in the household? I was born, my, I used to live with my granny. Then my granny died when I was six, and then we bounced around foster care, me and my brother's. 
probably just like a year uh, with different relatives. And then my grandpa took us in. So for the majority of my life, I, I grew up with my grandpa. Like if you listen to a lot of my music, I always talk about my grandma and my grandpa. Because my mom was in the streets and my dad, was, he was in the streets. You know what I'm okay. saying? Okay. Yes. And they didn't have you guys at all. Nah, nah. Okay. Was, from day one, it was my my granny. Did you see them growing up? Not really. I mean, my dad was in jail, in and out of jail, and then my mom, she was doing her thing. Probably like not too much. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna front. You feel me? But I love my mom and dad, even though they couldn't right. be in my life like that. You know what I'm saying? Do you have a relationship with them now? Yeah, my mom just had a stroke. She in the hospital right now. You feel me? Oh. Okay. We got a cool relationship. I can't say it's the best. I, I don't talk to them every day. My pops call me every day. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Like you know, I try to chop it up with him what I can. Like I don't. When I was a kid, I used to hold grudges and shit. But as I got older, I kind of like, kind of broke away from all that. Right. You know what I'm saying? There was certain shit that happened when I was a kid with my mom, that that I ain't really like. You feel me? Right. But like, like life too short to be holding on grudges and shit at the end of the day. So I kind of let that shit go. You know, everybody got their own problems. Like I got my problems with drugs. So, like, it made me, you know, look at it like, man, I'm going to blame her. Right. She really got a problem or had mm -hmm. a problem, you know. She, she's, she's in the hospital now trying to recover. Well, I pray that she recovers and everything. And... Yeah, nah, for sure. I just, uh, man, I just learned, like, motherfucker, like, everybody got a choice in what they do. Like, when mm -hmm. I start getting older and I start realizing shit, like, life ain't, this shit is not easy. Man, like, motherfuckers go Hell through depression. Hell no, it's not. Motherfuckers be stressing. Motherfuckers go through all type of different shit, you know? I think the craziest thing for me that I never experienced growing up was death. And I've lost so many people that I'm friends with, that I've interviewed, that I've met through the music industry. This, like, is a sure. whole different life for me. I was, like, growing up in Bakersfield, I was a regular person. You know, I wasn't, I was always known in the city, but I wasn't, like, known on YouTube and people recognizing me and shit and being around a bunch of rappers and different niggas that shit came later in life so yeah. that brought me a whole different set of friends that i didn't have growing up that Man. you know i grew bonds with and i think for me like first person i ever lost was my best friend and it, today's actually the anniversary of his death yeah, so rest in peace man. to I ingram you, yeah i seen you uh i seen y'all uh letting the balloons go yeah we let the balloons go today yeah. it made nine R. years R. P., man. he didn't know about none of this shit like he wasn't around for none of it like that when he nine died ago? yeah when yeah. he was died he was 23 and yeah. i was 23 and draco wasn't out none of this new la wave of music was out none of this shit was out so this is like Shit, he's seeing up there, and I wasn't like known in the music who industry. Yeah, not yeah. who I am today. So it's Man. like he was the first person I lost, and I was like, "Damn, this is crazy." And then it was just like a domino effect. And I had told my parents one day, like, "Y'all never prepared us for losing like friends. You prepared me for losing like older people, aunties from sicknesses shit and shit hurt, like huh? that. But losing the homies, and I'm not like a gang member, or I'm not in the streets. Like these are just." regular people I gained well they're not regular they're probably most likely gang members but they're just niggas I gained a friendship with friendship that with. I'm yeah. losing cause we all human yeah that shit is that's that shit for hurt. me like the weirdest thing as an adult that fucks me up now like it really does make me an angry person that I've lost so many niggas that I have to be around and my niggas are not here I'm so numb to it I just lost my homie look um, I just lost my homie December 1st yeah, it's crazy because I was just talking to this nigga a week before, and he never told me, R.P. Derek. He never even told me that there was anything wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, I found out afterwards he was going to the hospital, was drinking and shit, liver mm -hmm. and shit like that. But I'm like, damn, like I really just seen this nigga. I wish, like, if I known he was telling me about too short and shit, like, man, yeah. too short. Want uh, people want to get y'all to connect or whatnot. And I was in there making jokes and shit with the nigga, you know. But I would have right. been talking about if I would have known that my last time talking to the nigga, I would have been talking about some other, other shit. Other shit, you know, some important shit. But it just fucked me up a little bit. I'm like, damn, my nigga, like, damn, like life crazy. Like nigga, really be here and then gone, you know? gone, like in the next second. <clears throat> I cried when Nip died. I ain't gonna lie, like that shit touched me. Like if I knew the nigga, I felt like, right. like I knew the nigga. I cried when Nip died too. I think the whole world cried when Nip died. Man, I felt like I knew that nigga, like like it was my cousin or something. Everybody felt like a like some type of sort of connection to him, some whatever yeah, it was, that's like how whether it was be. a song or you met him once or mm -hmm. like everybody had a different story. Rest in peace to Nipsey too. 
Yeah, Rest that's that's why I be. That's how I want to be. I want to have a connection to the young niggas, the older niggas, the people just touch everybody. Females. Yeah, I'm a high head though. I ain't gonna lie. Everybody personality different. My I got a high head personality. Like when it comes to my ops, I don't be having no mercy for them niggas. Before yeah. like the kids, you bro. look like you could be like Doctor Jekyll, Mister High. <laughs> like, like I got two sides. I got yeah. this side of me. Like I'm, t- I, I be, I'm pass out toys to the kids. We we doing something this Sunday. You feel me in West LA on Pico? We giving we giving away toys. Uh, shout out T Baby the barber, Pico's finest. Like I'm a good nigga, but it's like you know I know this world is not a good world we living in. You gotta right. be a certain type of way. Right. Like, you, know, you can't let a nigga take nothing from you. A nigga gonna stay taking something from you. You can't it's let true. a nigga bully you. You gonna stay getting bullied. So it's like I learned. It's true. I'm a real. I'm really a good dude, but I learned to adapt. With with the time for whatever a nigga want to do, we can do it. Like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> whatever it is a nigga want to do, because that's just how you. That's how I am. Like I just go with with it. Yeah, I'm with whatever a nigga with. Like whatever. I'm my fight shoot. We can do whatever. Yeah, like my first personality is not to be confrontational, but I'm with all the bullshit. Like, exactly. and I'm gonna press a cold line. That's exactly every how time. I am. I'm avoid. Every time. I'm avoid it. But when it when it when it's there, or it's up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's up. up, and I'm gonna be a whole different nigga. Yeah. You know, but I try not to get like that. That's why I let niggas slide a lot and they be saying shit to me. Like, you know, or like right. niggas be having bad days. Like, I let a lot of shit slide. Like, but niggas like, niggas like, act like he about to harm me though. And it'd be like a whole nother story. But I know how to carry myself. Like, being, just being like in the world I live in. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm a gentleman. Yeah. I, I don't, I'm, I'm not no, no street thug. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a gentleman. Like, I know how to carry myself. I'm a player, you know? Play a tight nigga, man. Over there I on, believe that. Over there on Union. <laughs> y'all got a Union out here? No, I'm talking about Bakersfield. Oh, boy, don't be quoting Bakersfield Street. He threw me off, y'all. I forgot he think he from Bakersfield. Yeah, I know what I'm saying. Over there in Bakersfield, that as Union. As far as growing up and shit, let's get back to that story of, of you growing up. So you said you grew up, like, with your grandpa? And how many brothers and sisters did you have? Or did you just have all brothers? Um, they split us up all together. All together is thirteen of us. Okay. Wow. Yeah, it's four girls. Do you know everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All of us, and um, they split us up though. But my family members t- took custody of most of the kids, so like we didn't end up with like strangers. Right. Like my auntie got my little brothers. My grandma got my other little brother. My little sister, my my grandpa on my daddy's side took me. My other three brothers, so you know it was cool. Mm-hmm. We they ain't split us up like it, like they could have had a, had a one nigga in New York, one nigga in Philly, one nigga in Vegas. Like right. it would have been bad. You feel me? But yeah, not for the for the most part, we all know each other. What what number are you out of the thirteen? Uh, I'm three. Oh, so you're pretty older. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. three for sure. All right, got a gang of little brothers. My younger brother is eleven. Okay. I'm not mistaken, you know, my, my dad do a lot of fucking, ain't no telling that. Oh, nigga. so they're all his kids. <laughs> yeah, my dad do a lot of, horny, <laughs> he a horny nigga. <laughs> I'm, I'm over here trying to think, like, this nigga gotta do this. Yeah, not for sure, my youngest brother is 11. Okay. Yeah. And what was the ones that you were around growing up with and that you... I grew up with my older brothers. Okay. I didn't grow up in the house with none of my younger brothers. In the house, I was the youngest brother. They split us all up. So, yeah, okay. in my house, I was the youngest. And I did my, my two other older brothers. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so when you started going outside and you basically started being in the streets, how did that come about? What what was what was coercing you at such a young age to be outside selling crack? We didn't forget you said that. Nah, for sure. <laughs> uh, hustling, man. I needed money. Like, my grandpa put a roof over my head, but, like... He, I didn't want to like. I seen him, I seen him struggling, so I didn't right. want to put too much pressure on my grandpa, like asking him for lunch money and just shit like that. Like, man, I'm cool. I ain't about to be putting pressure. I'm about to go out here, and, you know, do what I gotta do, and it just made it easier for me and my grandpa. I didn't look at it like it was a bad thing that, right. I, that I was selling crack. What at what 12. age? Oh, twelve. I was twelve years old. Yeah. And how did you get introduced to it? If one you can my, tell one us, one of my homies. I ain't gonna say no names. Yeah, you don't you have know, to. He's say still that. around. One of my one of my homies, a, a good homie, he all, he was a known really a lot of my homies. That's what I was a thirteen year old kid. Yeah, I remind you, I was a thirteen, twelve year old kid hanging with nineteen year olds off the fact that I had big brothers. Right. So when my big brothers would be in jail, I'd still be hanging with their friends. Mm-hmm. We all from the same game. 
So to them, it was like it was like normal. It's like what they did it's naturally. Like what? He just made how much money? Eight hundred. Well, I'm gonna buy me a half ounce. Now, were you in school around this half. time? Yeah, I was in school. Were you? Doing? I used to dish school and, and breaking houses and sell crack. That was my problem too because I school wasn't bad. I used to like actually going to school, but when my phone get the ringing and the smoker called me talking about I got eighty dollars. I'm going to get that 80. You know what I'm saying? I'm a 12 year old kid. Y'all, I'm about I don't to jump mean to laugh because he dead ass no, serious. I'm, dead ass serious. This... I'm jumping that gate. I was in the seventh grade. I was going to Emerson. I used to sell crack. I'll be in class. There was, there's an Emerson in Bakersfield. It's ghetto there, too. Yeah. Is it one here? Yeah, no, nah, yeah, for sure. I went to Emerson Middle School. <laughs> yeah, it's ghetto in Bakersfield. Is this one ghetto, too? The one? Nah, it's, it's not even actually that ghetto. The, the school? I just was a bad kid. Okay. In, in a good area. Okay. That's, that's in, I went to school in Westwood. That, that oh, yeah. What I'm talking about. It's like damn near Westwood, West LA and shit. Okay. Then I started getting kicked out of every West LA school because they felt like I was too bad. Then they started sending me to South Central schools. I went to Mount Vernon and then I went to Audubon with all the Bloods and the Fodies. You know what I mean? I was just a badass kid. Like, you know, I feel like. Because growing up, got my job was in foster care in Compton. A little bit in South Central. I've been, by the time I was 12, I'd already been. Seen hella shit and been right. in other places. So when I moved to West LA, I'm like, oh, this shit nice as fuck over here. Because mind you, that's where I'm from, West LA. Like, I love my area, but I'm t- I'll am be the first to say it, it's gentrified. Mm-hmm. So it's not just like a ghetto area. Okay. Like, you, you will see an Asian lady walking their dog at midnight. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? Right. I'm, be, I'm not going to cap It's like it's gentrified, but it is, it's a gang area too. It's crazy how we just, you know, they in their world. Was it we in our world. gentrified when you were growing up? When I was growing up, nah, it's crazy because it didn't start getting gentrified probably to like, um, man, I think I got out of jail. For, I got out of jail for my attempted murder in 2010. I think, yeah, like 2010, I want to say. So from like all through like the early like 2004, 2005, hell, I was ghetto. You'll hit the block and see niggas out everywhere, black people everywhere. So like, yeah, like 2010. When I got out for attempted murder, it just seemed a little different. I'm like, damn, I know there's more white neighbors and shit on my grandpa street. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, How long did you do around that time? Um, How old I went were to you? jail, I was 16. I got out when I was 18. Yeah, everything. I went to jail, I was 16. Got out when I was 18. So what happened with that? Can you talk about what happened or no? Yeah, I can talk about it. Um, I was really innocent. I ain't gonna lie. I know a lot of people say that. But I just went to jail for my homie because of, mm-hmm. of the code. They came, they come and pick me up. You know, I know I didn't do nothing. I was there though, but you know they still charge you. You could be in the car with a nigga and not pull the trigger, and if somebody else pulled the trigger, but you still in the car, you going to jail. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Whether you was driving in the back seat, they don't give a fuck. You was in the car, you going to jail. So it was one of them type situations. Like you feel me? I was really innocent. My homie called me, like, hey, well, I just went over there to make sure to watch his back type shit. I pulled up. He, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It was a situation. They charged us with attempted murder, uh, aggravated mayhem. I'm talking about we stabbed the nigga eye out. <laughs> did the nigga... Did, man, we ain't stabbed that nigga <laughs> eye out, man. That nigga already had a bad eye. I'm screaming. But the police just didn't when like And you were 16? I was 16 at the time. Okay. Uh, I fought my fitness in East Lake Juvenile Hall. I was in Unit RS. Was that the first time you had went to jail? Nah, hell no. I've been going to... I was already a felon. So when did you... Since 12. My first, My first charge, look. I was I was twelve. I broke in a the house. They let me go home. They let my grandpa come get me. They gave me a court date for burglary, for Inglewood Court. When I was a kid. Bam. I'm still I'm still bad at this time. I'm still fucking up. <laughs> I'm I, still I, bad. I, I, I still a car. Bam. Wilshire Division catch me this time. They let me. They gave me a court date. They, it was a random late. person's car. Yeah, I just stole. I used to steal turtle vans with in the Toyota Camrys. I just you feel me? Take the screwdriver. And, Fuck the ignition up and stealing bitches easily. Nowadays you can't even steal a car like that with doing that. Back in the day you could steal a car so easy. So yeah, then bam, my second charge, uh, GTA. They caught me, let my grandpa come pick me up again. Then the third time, I, I uh, fired on a police officer when I was twelve. You feel me? So then they just added all my charges up and kept me. Burglary, GTA, battery on a peace officer, and then I ended. And then this is, and then you got this charge when you were sixteen. Nah, I was still 12. Look, they oh. me, look, like basically, look, I went to jail for burglary. They let me out. I went right back uh, to the police station a week later. 
for GTA. And then after that, two weeks later, I was like really committing. We've been committing yeah. crimes. So when the, we, I just caught like three cases in like a month. Bam, and I caught that third one. They kept my ass. I was 12 still. What was your grandpa saying through all this? Was he straight? Like, what was... Man, that's crazy because they charged me with battery on my grandpa, too. Because the night they brought me home, my grandpa was tripping. They was going to let me go again that night. You feel me? But I was drunk and my grandpa was tripping. They said I fired on my grandpa. You feel me? That was one of my charges, too. Battery on my grandpa. A battery on the peace officer. I, I just remember pushing my grandpa, like, bro, watch out. He, like, he had, like, jumped all in my face. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My grandpa had been in the Army, so he straight up. Was he, he older? Like, he was older. He, like, yeah. you know, he, he, like, he old as fuck. He been in the Army, so, like, he jumped all in my face. I just remember getting cracking. I don't know who I was hitting. I, I, remember, I remember hitting the police officer, though. I woke up in jail, though. They charged me with, uh, I already had the GTA and the burglary pendant, and now they put the battery on peace officer, battery on my grandpa. Stuck my ass for 13 months. When I got out, I was uh, I was 13, about to be 14. When Damn. I got out, when I ended up getting out. What made you want to do these things at such a young age? Like, I get the hustling and out like there anger. trying to get money, but what made you, like, just want to be rebellious I was like an angry kid. Like, like I was like, like, I was an angry kid. Don't get me wrong, because even though I was hustling, it'd be times where I'd fall off. Right and, and didn't have money because I was a kid. Right doing dumbass shit. I spend my real money, shit like that, and have no money. Be frustrated with just life, like you know, like fuck. Big trying, like, man. Is it like, is it supposed to be like this or what? Like the fuck. I was just frustrated, really, most of the time. You know. Mm-hmm. And when you frustrated with no money, it's easy to do violence. It's like, what else you gonna do? That shit free to go sock a nigga upside his head. You feel right. me? Whoop a nigga ass. That shit is free. Right, the easiest thing to do when you frustrated, beat the nigga ass. You feel me? So that's where I just game banging. I was game banging hard. Once I start getting older and learning hustles, like man, I look back at all that shit. Like that shit crazy. Like you know, you didn't have like your older brothers giving you any guidance. Or Them trying- niggas was burned. They was more burned than me. <laughs> Wait, Those niggas was game banging. My brother got a big rabbit on his face. My other brother got the. Playboy They're from the gangsters. same spot as you. Yeah. Okay. My other brother, he got the Playboy gangsters. I'm like. We all three, like, active game members at the time. Like, you feel me? Right. Active, though. Like, fucking the streets up. So, it was like, it was, we, 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 all, we was deep in. Like, my grandpa house what, getting what, what age did you start doing that? What? The game street? Bang? Yeah. I started game banging at 12. You feel me? How did you get into that? The brothers? My dad from the set. My big brothers. Yeah, I was already, like, I ain't gonna, I was in it. I was gonna game bang regardless. Like, my pops from the set. My big brother. I was just a badass kid. And how were you in school? Did you play any sports? Like how yeah, were you in earlier, school? earlier as earlier, like when I was younger, like eight, when I was eight, nine, ten, I used to play sports. And eleven, I was a raw last kid. I played for Wilshire Husky. I used to play Pop Warner, all the shit. I was always athletic. I was just telling the homie last night, like bro, anything I ever do, I always was good at it. Like you know, I played soccer, baseball, I played basketball, football. That's why it's crazy now that I'm rapping and I'm like, well, keep creating the buzz. I'm like, damn, I always been like, you know, yeah, a nigga and everything I did. Like, yeah, a joint. Me too. You know what I'm <laughs> like, shit, wow. That's why it don't really surprise me like that. I feel like anything I put my mind to, I can, you I can do. do it. Yeah, it so, always been like that for me. Why didn't you continue to like play sports and do that instead my heart, of like being? My heart in the wasn't in it. Oh, you said why? Why I didn't continue to play sports? Yeah, my yeah. heart wasn't just. I was good as fuck. But my heart wasn't in it. Like, you know? Your heart was in the streets. Yeah, like, I always loved music. You know what I'm saying? Like, I thought I was going to be like a little Bow Wow type of rapper. A little Romeo. I thought I was going to get on. I, I wrote an album when I was eight, nine years old. Oh, so you always been into yeah, music. I always had a, a love for music. You, you know Did you always, you always wanted to be a rapper? Always, and but never had the right resources and funds to actually know where to even start at being an eight-year-old right. kid. So I just kept, you know... I'm just going with what's around me, game banging and sports. But my heart wasn't in, in either one. My heart wasn't really in game banging and in sports. I always wanted to be a rapper. I wrote an album. Like, if I used to remix, uh, like, you know, songs on the radio, YouTube, little beats and shit I hear. I wrote a whole album, Jacking People Beats type shit. Like, right. And I would like my own professional beats. Nah. Okay. Like, uh, Lil Wayne to drop a hit song at the time, Lollipop, I'm remixing that. You right. Know, take the and beat. what age was this? I was eight. Nine, nine time. You know okay, I mean? so growing up in that area of LA, was that was that considered a dangerous area? 
Where? West LA? Yeah, where you grew up. West LA. Um, in the Heights, yeah. Los Angeles Heights. Like, not the whole. I would, in West LA, our section is the dangerous, most dangerous area in West LA. But I wouldn't consider, I wouldn't consider like, the whole West LA to be dangerous. Okay. If you get what I mean. Well, when you were our growing section, up, was it unsafe for you? Hell nah. Well, my homie died in front of, like, down the street. Like, damn near, like, 10 steps from my grandpa door. You know what I'm saying? My homie Tiny P. He died right in front of my grandpa's house. Like, right on my, right on the corner. Like, you feel me? Right there. Where my grandpa lives. So, nah, it wasn't safe. Okay, now. I had to make it safe, though. Was, you know was it, it was somewhat safe for you? Was it unsafe for people visiting? Uh, nah. If you was visiting, you was safe. You was way more safe than me. Just visiting. Motherfuckers wasn't bother, bothering no out of towners. Motherfuckers was more, look, you know, in, in looking for me and my brothers. Because we was the ones making the name. So they was more looking for us and our group of individuals. We kicked it with. But now, if you was from, like, uh, an out of town person over there, motherfucker wouldn't even pay you no attention. Like, it was like you've been straight. We already know who we looking for type shit. Like, you know what right. I'm saying? We know who we at it with already. We know exactly what they look like. It was more like that. You feel me? You probably would have got banged on, though. Like, just trying to check your temperature and see who you is. Do you feel like growing up in that area influenced a lot of your decisions that you made nah, as a young child? Show. Hell yeah. Explain, elaborate Money-wise, on because I'm going to school, my grandpa, right? People get it confused. They think like a nigga from West LA, we rich, Chris, blah, 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 blah. But I'm explaining it. Look, my grandpa bought that house in West LA when he was in, when he got out the army. Back then, the motherfucker was only 30000 you feel me? Now it's a million dollar homes over mm-hmm. here. Now these is million dollar homes. So motherfuckers assume just that because we grew up over there that we got money. Mm-hmm. Nigga, I grew up poor as fuck. Nigga, in a nice area. That's all that is. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I grew up poor in a nice area. Do you feel like other kids that you grew up with around your age were going through the same struggles that you were going through? Had to turn to the streets? Had to turn to hustling? Or was that just something you went through because of the cards that you were dealt in yeah, your it, life? I think it was the cards I dealt, you feel me, in my life. You know? Like, mm-hmm. I don't, like, I ain't come from the, the worstest family. Mm-hmm. Shit wasn't perfect either, though. Like, you feel me? I'm pretty sure somebody dealt with a, a situation, you know? Mm-hmm. Probably was worse than mine, but, you know? My shit was like, man. I always look back at it, though. It's crazy because it is what it's... It's what it made me today, like who I am now, how I carry myself in right. situations. Like I, like I don't even worry about a nigga taking my chain. Like I know it's about to happen. I don't, I, I, I cause I, I'm, I grew up in survival my whole life. So I'm, my whole, I'm, my instinct on survival is automatic. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not worried about a nigga playing with me. Like I'm a gang member. Like I've been for, already. I, I, you feel me? Like this, I, I'm with static. That's what I'm with. Right. So I've been I've been living in danger my whole life. So it ain't no it ain't no thing when the shit crack. I've been in riots. You know what I'm saying? So I know how to carry myself and conduct myself. I don't okay. look at it like I don't look at it like a bad thing. Having to grow up as a struggle. So when you finally get that money, that shit feel it feel good. And get get his hands on some money. You know what I'm right. saying? Coming from a struggle, that shit feel good. Well, I mean, most of the successful, talented artists are from that. I don't know. Something about that makes lying, y'all a lot of these, go harder. A lot of these niggas be lying. Though, they too. do. They be making a scene. A lot of people don't want to say, like, that's like me, right? I, I, just, I just told you in this interview, like, my hood gentrified. I and mean, it's not like how it would be in, like, in South Central. But a lot of niggas <clears> would be like, they'll be from... The, the suburbs, but they're not going to tell you they're from the suburbs. Right. I'm not from the suburbs, but I'm not from South Central either. Like, our shit is not as dangerous and kill all the shit that's going is on that... in South Central. But, like, you feel me? You'll get your ass still killed. Right. You is that man? frowned upon in street culture? I don't know. When your hood is, I, I like, rep not dangerous? I, I, I rep where I... See, see I don't know. I, and That's like me, too. You can Google my hood. That's why what I is it always had called? pride. Playboy Gangsta Crips. If you Google my hood, okay. you gonna you gonna you can Google it have my streets? hood. Yeah, it's gonna tell you okay. everything. You are gonna find your. You gonna see the history documentaries. They're gonna be telling you about indictments and court cases where people was murdered and all type of shit dating back to the motherfucking seventies. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. 
that's why I always took pride where I'm from, being being from West LA. I'm, I, my my gang I come from is a, it's a notorious gang. Over is there. it big? Yeah, over there in West LA, we big for sure. We one of the biggest gangs in West LA. Okay. okay. When did you first decide? Okay, I'm gonna start doing music. And how did you get introduced to? Me? In well, you said you've always liked music. Who who were some of the people before you tell us that? Who were some of the people that you listened to growing up? Growing up, shit. Man, everybody, then I can't even lie. I, I still today I listen to fucking everybody. I, I never like just had a. Um, if I had to pick though, like I, I I play Jim Jones a lot. Um, Random as fuck. Yeah, like, I fuck <laughs> like with Jim what? Jones. That nigga, that nigga that summer <laughs> of in all Miami, niggas. G Dub. I was off Jim Jones. I ain't gonna lie. That certified gangsters. Who else? You know Nip, of course. I, I was in jail, and I stumbled across Nip one day. I think I was just typing in shit on the computer. You feel me? And I and this nigga popped up. I've been listening to Nip ever since. And that was like back in 2008. I was in Juvenile Hall. Like, so I've been stuck on Nip ever since. Cause I ain't, right. I ain't never heard a nigga just tell, like, give it to us like so raw like that. Mm -hmm. Like Tupac gave it to us, but I feel like Nipsey was more like from this culture. This, yeah. This LA gangbanging culture. So yeah. Just like the way he just gave it to a nigga. It was just raw. It was relatable to you. Relatable. Yeah. So and I, a lot of people. For it sure it was. Mac 10. Mac 10's a nigga. I'm off that Mac 10 growing up. Snoop Dogg. You feel me? Snoop Dogg was played everywhere growing up. I yeah. Like, man, Even I no, was listening to Snoop Dogg. It wasn't up. no way around that. You feel me? Snoop. Who else? Corrupt. You know? I feel like the same people, you know, that everybody was listening to at the time. And then when, it, when the internet came about and I was able to go, like, uh, go really just search people up, I was just really in the net. Mm -hmm. And Tupac Would you say he's your favorite rapper? Yeah, nah, for sure It's a lot of dope niggas out here I ain't gonna lie I be seeing all the comments on the internet About LA rap this, LA rap mm -hmm. But when you sit back and look at it It's a lot We got a lot of dope niggas out here Like, for sure We some we gonna steppers. get into that Because I do want to ask you some questions About what you feel about the LA rap yeah. So we're gonna get into that a little later In the interview Because I do want to get your opinion on that more in depth When you got out of jail at 16 what did you do after that? Um, I went to jail a couple more times. Uh, I did you up, do any significant time for nah, a long period nah, of time? Nah. I, after I, after I did that year, for all them three pending cases I had, you feel me? That, that burglary, GTA, and the uh, batteries. I kind of was just going to jail for dumbass shit, but having blue chucks with blue laces, not going to school, smoking weed, little shit. Wait, they you were on gang file? I was on gang file. Okay. You feel me? Little um. Little punk ass violations. I'll do six months in camp, three months in camp, get right I mean, back. And this was still as a teen, or yeah. no, you were past eighteen. I was six. I was uh, fifteen when I finally got out, and I was on probation. And after after I did that year for mm -hmm. them, I was about fifteen. I ended up going back and I ended up going back and forth to jail for about a year, and I turned sixteen and got booked for attempted murder, Ag right? Aggravated mayhem, and I was put away again, all the way till I was eighteen. I got transferred. I talk about that in my song, um, No Privacy, too. I got transferred from Juvenile Hall. I turned 18 on a Saturday. Yeah, nigga, that Monday, nigga. I was in the county jail. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, homies. I was in nigga. East Max, 323. <laughs> and then when you got out at 18, did you go back after that? Yeah, no, nah, for sure. I stayed going back. It's the for sure. <laughs> I stayed going But now, once, once, once I became 18... I stumbled across some money, so it was different now. I had lawyer money, bail money. So mm -hmm. now the juvenile I couldn't bail out, so I had to sit there and do my time. When that, when I get eighteen months in camp, I had to go do the whole eighteen months in camp. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like when I six months, whatever it might have been. Since I've been an adult, I've been bailing out on their ass. I ain't gonna lie. I almost got stuck last year, man. So the okay, so you got out of eighteen and you did two years for that bid, right? Two years. Yep, okay, so have bit. you did any other times where you did a significant amount of time like nah, that? Just six months, nine months. Shit okay. Like that, county jail, shit like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And so, what did you do after that with yourself when you got out of jail? When you were eighteen, what'd you do? I tried to go to college. I went um for um business and management. No, it's not business. What's what that shit called? Business, business, um, development. business development, or some shit like yeah, some shit like that. Yeah, I tried to go to college and shit, but um, yeah, shit went for me. I was too thugged out. I don't know. 
I was really trying but to you don't that. really come off like thugged out. I had yeah. like a conversation. I was worse. I was bad with was... him before the interview, and you're See, not like like. But around this time, one hundred percent crip call. I was bad though around this time. Oh, you was See, a banshee over, around over the year, Over the years, <laughs> I learned how to. I I started hanging with pimps, and I learned how to talk over the years. Me hanging with a lot of pimps, mm-hmm. so like my conversation just got different. Before it was more like I talked like a straight gangbanger, like yeah, cut, cut. On the set, cuh, cuh, dead homies on the set. Like, you know, that was my vocabulary. <laughs> but once I started hanging around pimps, it's just like, oh, no, I fell back from all the extra loud cuz, and, you know? Mm-hmm. I actually know how to have a conversation now. But not for sure. It was lit. I grew up, God, man, my life's crazy. They're going to do a documentary about my shit one day. They're going to they write a movie about my life. Because, like, it's, it's, I, I'm, a, I'm an example for any kid that's out there. That grew up in a struggle. You feel me? Mm-hmm. If you like grew up with our parents, they just be thinking it's over. Like motherfuckers be counting themselves out. Like you know, just cause they didn't grow up with their parents or something. Like don't yeah. count yourself out. Nigga, go hard. That's another reason to even, you know, go hard in this shit. You didn't grow up with them at all. At all. I never lived with my parents. Day in my life. Did never. that ever affect you? Not mentally? As a, as a kid, but not really. Once I started gangbanging, I turned all my anger into just being an active gang member. You know, when you when you an active gang member, you don't want to cry about nothing. You don't want to get soft. Yeah, but no, I can't even lie. That shit affected me. But I didn't. I banged Tupac and just beat niggas zoned out. Like you know, I was in. I was into my lifestyle. I was a crip. Like I didn't even plan to make it to twenty one. You know what I'm saying? I thought man, I was gonna get life or somebody was gonna kill me. I was active like. I couldn't see me being no CEO. Like, I'm a CEO now. Right. I'm, I'm legit, getting legit money. I've never had a job a day in my life. Like, it feel good now, the shit I'm dealing with, trying to build my credit up. And, like, I mean, I'm, I'm living a whole nother life from what I thought I'd be living. Right. You know what I'm saying? But this shit, like, being a gangbanger out here, bro, motherfuckers don't understand. Just like when people leave the army, they still be fucked up about the army. Like, it's just like that with gangbanging. Motherfuckers don't know how to, it's like, Untrain their mind from thinking so much about gang banging and sliding, and you know. That when shit. did it become to you like? Because it seems to me like you. I mean, I I know it never dies. It's not something you can you can just say I'm not anymore. Mm-hmm. But it seems to me like in your adult years, you're very calm down and very chill, and you're not like maybe out on bullshit. Like, yeah, because you learned when, that. When and how did that happen, and what was the breaking point for you? You started when? learning, like, this shit's not what niggas try to make it seem. Niggas out here fabricating and shit, making it seem like it's that, and it's not. This shit's not no game to be. Like, game banging is not a game. Niggas, like, niggas getting life, and niggas ain't getting homies lawyers. Homies in there starving, not eating. Like, niggas don't ever talk about that part. Though. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. They don't ever talk about the real shit. Well, like, why niggas can not help bro get a lawyer or help bro, you feel me? Like, right. Motherfuckers, is the shit really for self. When it's time to take pictures and meet up at funerals, yeah, them pictures look good when they all together. As soon as the cameras go off, man, this shit for self. I remember the time I, ain't, I couldn't even go lay on a nigga couch. I had one homie that used to let me sleep at his house, my homie PK. Other than that, I can't even think of too many niggas where I could call and, like, go even sleep on their couch. Or, like, you know, this shit right. really for self. And I feel like that's the... Like, when you learn, when you go through something, like, when you not... Before being a game maker, you would look at it, you know, that shit look hard. They look like they together. They look like they, they get money. Right. And you get in it, and you like, damn, these niggas hating. They jealous. They want to kill me because I'm getting money. Like, from the outside, looking in at something, it'll look a different way you know, you, until you're really in it. And you know the, the real. Feel me? Mm-hmm. Then it's like you would be dumb if you know better. You do better. You would be dumb, and it's still in me though. I don't like my ops. I don't like you feel me? <laughs> boy. Shut up. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. It's still in me. I don't like the niggas, but it's like I just don't pay them no attention. That's he has I split know. personalities. Yeah. That was the other side coming out. No, for sure. Cause I, I, I don't like them niggas at all. I ain't gonna lie. It's to still you. in me. I'm I don't not like going, my ops. I'm not gonna even what? sit here and act like I'm just like some peaceful nigga. No. Hell nah. Hell nah. But I just know how to carry myself. I know how to. I'm a would you say you're, about money? Would you, would you say that you've significantly calmed down over the years, though? Could you Definitely. say that? What? Okay, I would have jumped in this interview and dissed all them niggas <laughs> and they dead homies. For sure, I just calmed down because it's just like 
Did somebody come and tell you, or was it a situation that happened? How? When did you nah. realize it was just maybe Nigga time grown. for you to just say less and? Nigga, grown man. At the okay. end of the day, I still be in them niggas DMs though, going back and forth. I was just arguing with a nigga yesterday, telling, <laughs> telling them fuck his dead homies. But I just don't be now. I just don't be posting it or like doing too much on live and shit. Like you know what I'm saying? Hey, you're really fucking funny. And Caso <laughs> told me you was funny, and I didn't feel like you're really blunt and like. <laughs> Not funny. for real though. I was just in a nigga DM yesterday. We was going back and forth about some shit. But now it's like I'm more back. If it was like years ago, I would have posted them, roasted them. Like I would have took it the whole like you know mm-hmm. he would have got some followers. Now I, I I had to learn not to make these niggas famous. So I could talk about a nigga, he gonna fuck around and get cracking. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's when that's when I had to start paying attention. Like, nah, I ain't. I still be at these niggas next, but you know I I just know how to carry myself too. Like cause at the end of the day, that's not the most. Do you have any rap beef with anyone? Rap beef, nah. That shit's not I mean, the most important thing in the world going on, like like going at it with these niggas. When I started touching money, I fell in love with money. Like you feel me? That mm-hmm. shit like a. I feel like beefing like a broke nigga sport. Like you feel me? When you get money and you can go go, you can go to the Lakers game and you can go do different shit and jump on the plane, go to Miami, Jamaica. It's like you start. It's like it's too much to be doing to be worried about them niggas. But nah, but nah, I don't got no rap beef for nobody. Well, what is the situation with you and Yellow Hill? That look like rap beef to me. Yellow Heezy, my Neezy. Yellow Heezy. And that's my boy. Um, how, how how can I explain that? Is um, he really your boy or are you trolling? Nah, it's really my boy. We from the same game. We from the same game. <laughs> that's my boy. I we thought from... you said he wasn't a real gang member. And it's, basically, what happened was, I explained it uh, I explained it in, the, in my song. I, I said, he got put on at 28, basically. You feel me? Like, I always stood on what I said, too, because I was just like, I, I even kept it. But he's it. from, he is from. Yeah. He got put on at 28. Th- there's no beat? Nah, we cool now. We had a situation earlier this year, though, um, in, like, January. Yeah. Basically, where. Um, what happened? Um, what happened was, he did an interview with No Jumper, and I basically um, disagreed with a few things that was said. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I just. I got tired of people asking me about like, why you don't got a song with Yellow Hill. Yellow Hill, like I be wanting people to know, no disrespect, bro. Like even he know, like one thing about Yellow Hill, he 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 knows this. Like while I'm stating this facts, it's like he's a dope rapper. I'm never taking nothing away from Cud as a rapper, but Cud no. Like growing up, I was really in the streets head first. Like he, there's something he's know he knows personally. Right. My whole city know like who like nigga, you know who pistol whipping niggas and who hopping out doing shit. Like, you hearing it. You know who getting cracking around this motherfucker. So, I just felt like when my name came up in a No Jumper interview, more, uh, more respect should have been put on my name. You feel what me? did he exactly say? I didn't see the interview. Like, as far as, like, like, like cause I know I'm a real crip. So, I just feel like when my name came up, um, what was it about? Like, some candles being kicked over or something. Like, I never kicked them candles over. You feel me? It was like a little nigga died. And his mm-hmm. candles got kicked over. You feel me? They accused you of kicking them over. And yeah, on the internet, they say, Whoa. so every time candles come up, you know what I'm saying? Like, my name come up. Wow. He like, yeah, I don't kick candles over. I ain't that type of crit. You know, I explained to Cud why, why, why. You feel me? Right. And I was like, damn, when my name come up, bro, you know. Fuck all this rap shit. And they could be jealous about this rap shit, all that. Fuck all that. You you even seeing me come from where I come from to even being able to do this rap shit. You should be happy for me because you know we was me and my people head in with this shit first. Right. So you know how we came. Like niggas, niggas getting booked for murder, really living in this shit. Like you feel me? That niggas be rapping about. Right. So that's all it was. I was just, you feel me? I had explained it to him. We talked about it, but we cool now though. Bro, doing this thing. I was he still I a fake yellow, gangster? I want to see Yellow Hill win. Or is he? Is he? Um... I, do, nah, you, do you change your mind on nah, that statement? I don't, nah, I don't, everything I said, I stand on everything I said. Okay. Yeah, nah, I feel, but it is it is what it is, bro, doing his thing. He's from the set. He got put on at 28. You feel me? He doing his thing. I want to see bro prosper. Like, I want to, like, I'm a real nigga. Okay. One thing about me, the truth is the truth. Like, one thing about, cuz not no buster, though. Cuz a squabble with nigga, too, though. You feel me? He just... Basically, like, it's ranks with this shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he I don't believe Yellow Hill's a buster. Like, okay. Like, and, and he's a dope rapper. I don't know him at all. Like, look. I'm, I mean, like, I don't think he's a buster. Let me say that. I don't think he's a buster. I think he's a fight. And I think he's a dope rapper. You feel me? Like, but I'm saying, like, but when he, we talking about streets, 
when it comes to like killing and really being like an active game member, it's just different levels to shit. But no, nah, su salute Yellow Hill though. I, I want to see Cut win because he is a homie from my side. That's why we couldn't keep it just going. It looked corny right. at the end of the day. Me right. and my homie beefing. We could be beefing with the ops at the end of the day. It's like, I mean, I can say my homie, like a nigga from my hood. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, don't, like, I ain't about to just keep on keep up a beef with a nigga. Right. Like, why I like Terry? Why, why, I don't like tearing down niggas on my side. I could tear down these niggas on the other right. side of anything. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That's basically what more of that was about. Okay. Yeah, nah, shout out Yellow Hill. He doing his thing. Shout out to Yellow Hill. Yeah, yeah I definitely had to ask because... Yeah, I don't, I'm not going to never say nothing and take it back because I'm right. not going to never say nothing that's not true. Right. You feel I me? Mean? I only take it back. You take it back shit that's not true about people. You know, but if I say something, I'm not going to... It's not going to come out of my mouth if it ain't true. So, I, ain't t I don't take back nothing I say. You feel what I'm saying? Right. 100%, I understand. Okay. All right, so as far as the music goes, how did you start making music? Let's talk about the music story. I want to know the whole story from Man, beginning to end. Shit. How you started to become Big from Sad. The did you always the have end. the tattoos on your face? I got these tattoos when I got out of jail. Um, I was I got out when I was 18 from doing that time. Mm-hmm. For the attempted murder, aggravated mayhem. Uh, I was fucking around and shit, you know. I always liked the tattoos. I, was about, I don't know what made me. I don't know what made me go to the face. Hey, you want to know something crazy, though? I have my baby mama name right here. That's probably where it started. It's a cover-up. I don't know if you can tell. You see it? say Jasmine mm -hmm. under, under it. You I probably think can't so. even see. I can't read the name, yeah. but I can you see You see something. it's a name, though? Yeah. I put the Bugs Bunny laying down over it. So that's where it started. And then I just started to... You know what I'm saying? I don't know what made me. I, re I regret it, though. If I, if I could have been as a clean face, nigga, and tat just my throat down, that would have been even better. You feel me? But, you know, nigga make mistakes in life. You feel me? It's just too... I don't like standing out too much. I feel right. like when I walk in the room, motherfuckers are automatically looking at me. Right. Know? But now that I'm an entertainer, so I made it work. So it's cool. Is there any part of you at any given moment in time where you ever regretted or do regret, you know, being in the streets. Definitely. Hell yeah. My first time going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> My first time getting caught. But I mean like actually gangbanging, not just being a street nigga. Like I mean like actually being, you know, did you, have you ever thought to yourself like, nah, damn, I could have lived a, I could have lived what? a regular life. What? <laughs> if a nigga ain't thought like that, a nigga ain't deep in it. I'm pretty right. sure every nigga that's really deep in it has like this shit's stressful. This shit is not man, bro. Still to this day, I got homies that call me like bro, like like bro, I don't got no money, bro. You can cash at me a hundred. Like, you know what I'm saying? Niggas is out here struggling. This shit hard for a felon, a nigga that getting out of prison trying to get a job and trying to hustle and just provide for his family. Motherfucker, this shit is hard. Everybody don't got the talent to be a rapper and be right. blessed to be you know, a talkative person where they can be a, a YouTuber or um, a podcaster or whatever. Everybody don't not blessed like that, bro. So it's like, you know, it's like, man, I be doing what I can trying to help niggas out, you know, trying to provide for my people and shit. And I right. regret it because it's like, that's, nigga supposed to get money. This shit about money. This shit ain't about like, this shit is supposed to be strictly about getting money. Mm -hmm. Game banging. Just, if you could go back, would you not have done it? Yeah, no, I wouldn't have game back. I would have okay. just been a fly pimp nigga. Okay. I would have pimped, though, for sure. I would have always been a pimp. Who said that you're that? Putting them hoes down, for sure. You ain't, you're not that. <laughs> He's not that. He's just playing, y'all. Yeah, no, nah, I'm just fucking He's around. He's just joking. <laughs> but no, nah, I would have been a player, cool type nigga. Like, yeah. uh, I wouldn't have been no game banger. I wouldn't have been nothing. I've always been a cool player. Cause, like, I feel like life would have been more better than I could go to. Compton, I go to a blood hood, crib hood, right? Hoover neighborhood, whatever. Fuck everybody. Cause you want to bring the world together anyway. Yeah, cause I'm the type of nigga I fuck with everybody anyway. But right. Me, me being a game banger, motherfuckers, like they automatically put me on the side. Where like sometimes you know I need gotta I gotta ride with my side, whether regardless right. of what the situation is, right or wrong. But yeah, nah, I, I could have been a neutral nigga. Okay. That's how, I got a good personality like that. You feel me? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, for sure. A lot of Big sad for president. I done been in jail. A lot of niggas from the other side. Them niggas don't just don't not like me. You know what I'm saying? Them niggas right. like oh, some niggas from the other side. They fuck with me. You feel me? And just they they understand. Like they young homies be trolling me. I'm gonna troll back. 
Shit, you know, they know how I am. I know some niggas from the other side, though, for sure. Right. I done put money on niggas' books. I got to bust down spreads with niggas and all that. Music. How how did you start making music? How'd you become Man. Big Sad? When I got out of jail, I, I, I fucking, um, man, I learned you can upload videos to YouTube. Because I always thought YouTube was like a, um, like a Spotify type of thing where you oh. just listen and watch. Mm-hmm. I didn't know you can actually record actual music videos and start uploading them. When I found right. out that, I was like, oh, this is this new. Like, this different. They giving a nigga opportunity. I had a love for music, just being a young nigga. I always had a love for it, but I just didn't know the right way to take, like, which way. Like, sometimes you gotta point a nigga in the right direction. Right. And that's what my homie Steve-O did for me, rest in peace. That's why I love that nigga so much. He always pointed me in the right direction, no matter what it's to some money. You know what I'm saying? That's why, I, like, man, I had my homie died. You feel me, last year. Okay. Like, that shit really, like, He's the one who up. told you to make music? Make music, yep. So, really, with him just telling me make music... Like, you know, he's like he was like that one homie that just even if it was weak, he man, like pumping me up, like made me feel like I was a nigga. And just with him alone doing that, man, the fans start pumping me up. Like, damn, I just start like, you know, once mm-hmm. after once after a thousand people told me I'm I'm him. It was like, you know, I should start getting to a nigga head, start coming out of my raps. I start rapping like I'm him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I start slowly, shortly becoming him. What age was this when you started? I started rapping when I was down there like, man. I started as a kid. I, I wrote my first album when I was like eight years old. Okay. But I never really took it serious. I, I started taking rap serious when I was probably like 25 type of shit, 26. I feel me. That's not really started taking it serious. What was that push? Like, what was that moment that let you know, like, okay, it's now or never with this rap shit? Because everybody says... I rap, but I never took it serious. So what that was it? The moment for me was like, um, my homies died. And I was like, I was making money in the streets. But it was like, it got to like a ceiling. Like in the streets, it's like a, you hit like a ceiling where it was like, I feel like I couldn't get over them. I need, I need that. I'm watching like Lil Baby and watching all these other rappers. And we counting 100000 a million dollars on Instagram. Yike and all that. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I'm watching this. Niggas making boss moves and shit. Drake, though, I'm watching this shit. I mm-hmm. need to rap shit. Like, this is where it's at. Like, mm-hmm. the, you know, back in the day, uh, selling crack was probably the thing. Everybody was bossed up on selling crack. You know, you have your errors. In this era, the rapper and the athlete is what's then. And then the businessman, you know, of course, like the entrepreneurs and shit. But, like, all that other shit, like, I don't know. You know, it seems to me right. like the rappers is getting the money. If you can go do a show and get 300000 you a nigga. Right. So you you seen it and you was like okay this is where it it's at now I, what I like did money. you know you had talent in it yeah I knew I always had talent that's just, that's a fact okay like, I mean I told you I wrote my I wrote my first album when I was eight so it was always in the back of my head that I could rap and then I'd be rapping for niggas in jail rapping for niggas on the block but when YouTube came about and they started letting you upload videos okay I didn't start taking it serious right then and there mm-hmm. you get me. It took me some time. I went to jail a couple more times. And struggled and, you <laughs> he know, plays too much. Bang, bang, doing hell of shit. But it, it, it just hit me one day. Like, man, I need to rap. You feel me? Mm-hmm. On the set, then I seen What's the Name blow up, too. Like, Blueface blew up. You feel me? He not his, he from the hood, like down, right down the street from me. Okay. So I'm watching all this play out. I'm like, man, this nigga just blew up getting rid of Oh, I need to do this. And I, like, I never believed it like that, bro, until I started seeing it in front of me. Like, I seen Blueface rapping on, on, on like, on YouTube before he was uh, um, an Instagram and shit before he was blew up. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I seen cause to now where he at. Draco, I seen cause I'm watching these niggas. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So it's like, damn, YG, Mustard, all of them. I watch all these LA rappers blow up. Nip, oh, shit, man, I gotta do this shit. Why, like, you know, now or never. That's okay. Cracking. So what did you do? What was the first thing you did? Would you you went to the studio? Like, what'd you do? What was I, the I was first at the house. Thing? I was living in Vegas at the time. You feel me? I was out there trapping in Vegas. I had a condo. I was in my kitchen popping perks. I was, and I wrote a, I, I was listening to hella beats and I wrote a song, 
Shout out Ruel. He from Detroit. I was playing the gang of Ruel beats. Ruel stopped playing. Playing the gang of bro beats and finding some shit. It seemed like it just made it so easy for me. Like mm-hmm. them Detroit beats, bro, they'd be so easy to rap on for me. It was it like, you know, but then after a while, I stopped rapping on Detroit beats. I wanted to kind of create my own sound. I'd be getting off a show. I just was in my kitchen fucking around. I rapped them, and my first song I did was No Hooks. No, I, I'm lying. I take that back. A year before that, I put out a song called Los Angeles Heights. It's out right now, but I took it down. You feel me? And I quit. Then I came back January 2019. Like, man, I'm going to put that song out again. Right. That bitch had 1.5 million right now. Before I should have 500 views. I'm like, what? They don't like this? I'm like, how they don't like this? It's just my marketing. Now, you started right dropping now. just strictly on YouTube with videos. Yep. And you didn't weren't on the streaming sites yet? Nope. Not yet. What year was this and how old were you? At this time, shit. Um, I started dropping on the streaming sites. Really, I ain't gonna lie. As soon as I started dropping on YouTube, I really started dropping at the streaming sites, though. Okay. Yeah, I started dropping at the streaming I started rapping, I was like, this part, and I was like 28 at the time. You feel me? Started putting out music and shit, putting it together. Like, I always knew I had the talent, and then I had people watching me. Like, you know, I feel like it's easier when you got already a name buzzing in the streets. Right. When you a nigga, like, you can't just come out of nowhere and be talking about all this shit that nobody knows about. Right. But when you a nigga rapping about shit that people know, like, people know I had a Porsche when I was 19. It's like, no, I'm not the only person that noticed. Right. A thousand motherfuckers that noticed. Niggas know I had condos, and they know I hit for 100,000, and these stories I'm rapping about. It's right. Like, I'm not the only person who knows this. Right. I'm not making it. You know, there's a thousand motherfuckers who know. So it's like making it more easy. It was kind of easy for me to become a rapper because my story just what it is. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like, I ain't have to lie and make up hella shit. The shit I'm actually rapping about is motherfuckers that know. They know about it. Like, oh, damn. They were surprised I was able to put it together like that and make it sound hard. That was the part for me. I had the story, mm-hmm. but I had to put it together and still make it sound hard where you don't want to bob your head and rap with it. You know what I'm right. saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, I had the story already, but you got the, the music. A lot of motherfuckers got a story, but it's hard to kind of put the words, that wordplay, how right. you, how you saying it. And make it flow and yeah, sound Yeah, make good. it flow. Like, mm-hmm. a lot of that shit is important. I had to learn all that. I had to just teach myself how to rap, you know, being a street nigga, having to teach myself how to be a rapper, you know? Right. So where do, when do you feel like you had your breakthrough moment, if you did have it? Because you're very popular right now. Everybody knows who you are. You're in a different realm than you were when you started. So man, not for sure. Um, I feel like every year I drop a every year I try to drop two songs. I try to drop two songs every year that stands out. Mm-hmm. Like I drop a lot of songs all throughout the year, but every year I'm gonna have two or three songs that and it stands out like. You know, mm-hmm. this year I had like like last year I had misunderstood banger. Every time I dropped them bangers, I I I dropped albums with them surrounding that banger. So when motherfuckers hear them bangers, they they want to hear more music. And every time I do that, I just notice myself growing more. Like every season, I try to I just drop circles on fig, big song this year for me. Mm-hmm. We just did a million in three months. That motherf- like I'm pretty sure I got way more new fans off of that. Like. I noticed when I dropped them bangers, like, people flood music, right? I got 16 albums, but you got to know how to flood when you're doing the music. You don't just flood a gang of bullshit music. Like, between time and the meantime, you better come with one of them, boom, hit them niggas upside the head. Like, right. you know, rappers get too caught up with just putting out just a regularized music. Mm-hmm. Just, just saying shit. Right. Man, motherfucker, you got to hit these niggas over the head. Sometimes, like, when Kendrick... Did that uh, control verse and he was calling out all the rappers. Remember, mm-hmm. and then he shook the shook the whole world up for a second. Oh yeah, that's he what, had everybody yeah, talking about that. That's what you. That's the mo- that's type of moments you need in hip hop, and that's the type of artist I am. I come to shake shit up. That's how I'm stepping, you know. Right. Do you feel like your music is very controversial? Yeah, depends. Not all of it. Not is all it based songs. around the street culture that you grew up in in your neighborhood and your area? Yeah, for sure. See, I'm I'm an artist too. That I'm not I'm not gonna um, just be talking about cars, jewelry, and shit. Like if I had to sell my chain, my watch, I'm gonna talk about it. I'm not I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm not shy to talk about my mistakes and where I went wrong at and how I'm trying, right and how I'm trying to fix it. I'm not gonna just tell you like oh, I'm bossed up, balling at, uh, I'm getting rich. And, uh, nah, I'm gonna tell you like man, I'm 
broke, nigga. Trying to figure this shit out. I had to sell my watch. Caught a case. I might have to go to jail, nigga. Right. And it's like that. You, you know what I'm saying? Tell it like it is. Tell it like it is. You feel me? I'm, I'm, I'm not about to be acting. I'm, I'm, <coughs> I'm beating cases. Me. Bless you. I'm Thank not you. about to be acting. I'm beating cases. And I'm just stepping in. I guess ups and downs, you know? Right. And I think that's what people like me, like me and relate to me. Because they like, man, this nigga actually, I, I talk about reality, like life. Mm-hmm. Life ain't always perfect. Motherfuckers need to hear all the ups and the downs about this shit, you know? Right. Most definitely. So, when, okay, so when did you start getting more popular and building your fan base? What do you think it was that got you to that next step to where you are now? Um, dropping um, my catalog. Just having music that speaks for itself. Really, I, I don't feel like it was nothing extra. Like, I probably got star power, too, and shit. Like, you know, nigga, you know, fly, nigga. And you think it you know was getting into it with niggas on the internet and shit like that? Uh, nah. It, it ain't too much of that. It was a little bit of that going on. But they attached my name to a lot of shit, too, because, you know, once you attach my name to it and you attach certain other artists' names that's big, it make it it make it bigger than what it really is, like, you know. Yeah. They would love to attach my name to it because if they just put a regular caption, they gonna do regular views. Right. Like, you throw Big Sad on there, it should do fucking two hundred thousand. You know right. What I'm so it's just different. I had to understand that too. Like motherfuckers just throwing my name in there because it's like okay, they trying to get paid. They monetize their channel. Right. I had to learn that. Like okay, that's why I'm like why? Because I had to figure out like why do motherfuckers be clickbaiting. And I had to learn. I'm fucking getting paid off YouTube. They trying, right. to, they trying to get paid. Whatever, however they doing it. You know? Right. Sometimes you do have those moments where you do play back a little bit. With the ops? <laughs> who, who, who you said that, about? not me. <laughs> With you, the ops? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, 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 for sure. Yeah. On me. I'm, I'm, I'm petty. One thing about me, man, niggas be, niggas be thinking they gonna bully me or something. I don't know what these niggas. They think they Superman. Like, bro, I didn't. I didn't walk. Man, I didn't been around the killers. Like, a nigga in jail with no gun, walked in a tank with with thirty nigga. I didn't done everything. Like, I, I don't, don't think about me. I got a big heart. I don't fear no nigga. Right. So just because I carry myself a certain way, and I be with Asian people, I be with white people. Don't think that a nigga not like. You know what I'm saying? Right. I enjoy kicking it with my white friends, my Asian friends. Don't think a nigga a sucker like a nigga like won't smoke when you niggas like you feel me. Mm-hmm. I, I, I grew up like that. I already that's easy to do. I'm really trying to do different shit. I mean sushi. We ate, I'm out eating sushi with Asian people. We chilling. Feel me? We take a sake, drink a sake and shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm trying to live a different life. I'm trying to really live and do everything. You know what I'm saying? Right. Do you feel like you've gotten more attention in a negative way from you? You would call them ops. I don't know. They're not my ops, but you know, from your ops, you would say, do you feel like you've gotten more negative attention since you've been rapping versus like when you was just in the streets as a as a regular nigga in the yeah, streets? Yeah. Why do you think that that well, is? Huh, matter of fact, no. Do you no, feel like your music reflects around the street life? No, I take that back. I don't feel like you I really think it be... started when I started making money. Okay. Like when I was a broke, when I was they broke op, they didn't care about me. Okay. When I started, when I start like getting money in the and street, that was you were making rapping. money before rapping. Yeah, okay. I bought a Benz, I bought a Porsche. They was already they chased me on the freeway. I thought it was the police. You feel me? It was the ops. That <laughs> I don't mean to me laugh, the but the way you tell stories, yeah. it would seem like it was, it's like a joke. Yeah, they chased me on the freeway. <laughs> but you're dead ass God, serious. Look, I'm in the car, my homie face rest in peace. I'm thinking the police on me though, but I'm, I get over a car, get over with me. It's eleven o'clock at night. I just bought this Benz. I posted on Instagram, bought an S550. Feel me? I only got my plates on there. I got this bright ass red plate though, cause I got it from my boy Kato in, in Orange County. So long story short, I get on the freeway. It's a car get on with me, and they, I get over. They get over. I get over. They get over. What the fuck? Right. I get over. I just, I just start smashing I mean, AMG. I, gone. So in my head, I'm like, damn. I'm telling the homie, hey, wake up, bro, wake up. I'm like, bro, the police behind us. They own us. You know, we doing other shit, criminal activity. So that's the last thing I'm thinking about is the ops. Right. I'm thinking the Johnny's on it, but they never hit the the lights. So, and I get off on Western, and I get the wiggling on my head. I'm like, damn. I'm like, why the police never hit the lights on us? I'm like, damn, did I just get away like that from the ass? The next day, they posted me on Instagram. Because I knew I seen a flash. Look, that's what made me think it was the police. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm like, I see a flash while they behind me. 
fuck? I get over it. But these niggas taking pictures to post me on Instagram. They just take it, yeah, but I right. seen that flash though. Right. So I was, I'm thinking it's the police. How they know it was you? Where were you coming from? I posted my car earlier that day. I but was where were you from coming my grandpa from? House. Oh. And my grandpa lived in the set in okay. the area already, and I already had. So posted they knew my when they seen the car. That day. All the homies, twos and twos. all the homies reposting it. You know, everybody happy. I'm young. I'm, I'm 19. Do you still do stuff like that now? Post cars hell and nah. shit. Nah, hell no. Nah. I'm 19 in the SY50. You right. know, at that time, like, you know, motherfuckers, like, what the fuck? Like, young nigga, I'm standing, they watching this, too, the ops. This way before rap. Way before right. the rapper. They watching this type shit. They just jealous and shit. I feel like anytime you start getting money, you become, like, the figure in the hood. Right. In any hood you from, because everybody not getting money. So when you start getting enough money, when you, you buy Rolexes and, like, my chain, 500 grand, for instance. I was already buying these type of chains before rap. Mm-hmm. You already gonna stand out. You feel right. me? So yeah, that's when it really all started for me. It didn't even really start rap. Rap just made these niggas mad now. Like they gonna try to kill me. Why? Because now it's like I'm rapping about that goofy ass. You feel right. me? And, and and making a mockery of them. And you feel me? And while getting paid. You feel like your music is is around the shit. I don't be feeling like nah, you be dissing. Nah. Some of my yeah, think about it. I got. Do six, you have anything where 16, you've named anybody? Hell yeah, I got sixteen albums. I name the dead niggas and everything, but but my thing by is, names. Yeah, for sure. But my whole thing is I didn't hear no disrespect. Yeah, I got I got, but I don't do it in every song. I got one song. I'm talking about dead niggas, rest in piss, and all type of shit. But for the, my that's majority of my music is regular though. Mm-hmm. That's why you won't even probably hear yeah. them songs. You gotta really go digging to hear me really just. Saying niggas' names and shit. I got some disrespect. Is it shit. a mood you get in to make yeah, me want to do that? Yeah, my mood. One of my okay. homies might die, or they might they might jump one of my homies in jail, and I get a phone call. You feel me? We might we might just be out of all our war that month, like niggas dropping, and I like it'd be like that. You know what I'm saying? Be a mood, yeah, for sure. Would you? Okay, so do any of your ops make music? Hell yeah, all of them. Okay, mm-hmm. and um, I mean it's weak though. Okay, and would. On like a business type of thing, would you would you do a song with them? Hell nah. If a nigga pay me, probably. Uh, it, uh, I can't even sit her. He's not even my op though. That's the thing. The only one that I would work with, he's not even really my op though. That's the fucked up thing. I don't really want to say no names. He's okay. like the biggest nigga over there. Okay. But I don't really consider him op. But if he paid me or them niggas paid me or whoever want to pay. But yeah, I don't know, but not, not really like the ones that be on the internet popping it and acting like they can, you know. So you would do it for money? Hell yeah. If they how much? Me, how much would you take I to do it? I need a quarter it? million, man. So you need a and lot. That's not even with all of them. That's only with that's only with a, a selective few that don't be popping it, like that don't be like acting like tough guys. All the ones that be acting like tough guys, we can never work. It's on site. Right. Yeah, I want no money. We can never work. It's on site. Like, man. So you say you don't have no rap beef, but does anybody has anybody made any I songs in your name or anything? Do you um, beef with shit. anybody that you Hell can yeah. think of? A, a little dead nigga. A little nigga died. He said my name. Before he died, he said my name. Well, it's his homegirl. She said, I'm pretty, the mother said my name all the time. Y'all probably just don't hear if it. If I was to react to it, right. then y'all see it. But I don't ever react to it when they. So do are it. these people that? So y'all never see it. These are not actually people that you have a personal one on one beef with, though. They're this just hood shit. It, but then, but they singling me out like they yeah, really mad saying. at my game. Okay. Like, these niggas so retarded. So they you don't have no hood. beef with them personally. I just talked. That's funny. I just talked about that in a song last night in this same room. These niggas is so retarded. They they don't even come to the hood and whack the hood out no more. They put Sad Boy K on the wall like they making it about me versus them. Like yeah, instead of just like you're the, the gang whole... versus the gang. I just yeah. made a song. I'm gonna let you hear it before you leave. I just talked about that last night. Like they they targeted me, like just me, and then they run into the homies. Do you like, think no, it's because you're? Are you the only one that's a rapper from there? Nah, it's like three of us. Is is are you the only one that's as popular as you? We got another one, Blue Flag. Well, I'm well, I'm probably the most popular yeah. Okay. And then Blue Flag doing numbers too. He doing way more than them. Is he? Does yeah. he do dissing in his music or anything like that? Same shit, I'll be on. Okay. And, he, and he way more popular than them. He's okay. he way more popular than them. But it's just, you know, you, they try to cut, they, cut, they try to come for the big dog. Like, you know, mm-hmm. I feel like that's, that's what anybody would try to do, though. If I'm going to go ask some niggas in their group, I ain't going for the, I'm, going, I'm coming for the nigga. 
who think he the you know what I'm right. So why one. don't you diss Blueface in your music then? Me? Yeah, because he's what he's probably the most I don't popular because one because from. I don't know their hood, right? I don't really know Blueface to be dissing him. Like, okay, I mean that's my my whole thing. Even though I don't know them, and then he never said nothing about me. Okay, I look at it like differently with Blueface. I don't know. I like, I like he like um he like he like. Uh, a good entertainer like he like Snoop Dogg. I really mm-hmm. cut like Snoop. Like he, he's good at what he do. Like I don't really know cut to be dissing cut. Like, I don't really have no history or know anything about cut. Like right. he ain't never disrespected me or disrespected the set. You feel me? And right. I actually like what cut do. He get money. That's right. one of the noise I'm talking about. I'll do a song with if them niggas if somebody wanted to pay me how they pay Kodak to do a song with six nine. Right. If somebody came to me like we got a million dollars do a song with Cud, he probably the only one I do it with is Blueface. The mother niggas I just don't like. Right. I don't really know Blueface though. That's right. The thing. The mother, I don't know the mother niggas. I know a few of them, but they just they they just I don't know. Right. It's hard to explain. Like Blueface, I actually watch Cud. When I watch Cud, I don't I don't get mad. Like it's like I'm watching just like a uh, little baby or any other rapper. Like you know what I'm saying? Like he's not disrespectful. He like his music not disrespectful. He actually doing his thing. You feel what I'm saying? So you don't choose... Some other niggas be to, taking shots when, at me. When you do have named people in the songs and stuff... They be was, taking shots at me. Was it provoked? It was provoked. Yeah. Okay, so you just never set out to just do nah, that. Nah, never. Okay, that's not your yeah, formal. Yeah, hell nah. I make, real, I make real music. If you go like, I got songs for females, be my Jada. My, my main focus is to get, get a Grammy. But if anybody have ever, like I've ever went at them in a song, just know. They said something first, and I took it. And I, I took it there on their ass. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah, because they never took it there with me or said nothing about me. Right. And we well, I only we asked we that because no type of, we don't got no type of smoke. You feel me? Our hoods don't see eye to eye. Right. And, you know, I'll be only at the niggas that be in my DM and thinking they thinking they own that. You know. Right. Okay. Understandable. Understandable. I play fair. I don't. You know. Right. Understandable. I don't be just that no nigga. Now, do now as far as L.A. music and L.A. culture and the politics, I've noticed that you're you're um, you're very friendly. You know, you seem like you get along with everybody. You, you be with different niggas, niggas that don't get along with each other, but they get along with you. Shit yeah. like that. How I'm how do, with everybody? How do you differentiate around that? Like who you gonna fuck with and who you not gonna fuck with, and like. What is your take on like the LA politics and everything going on with the music and the LA shit and the politics and the gang culture that's mixing into the music and what's your what's your opinion on it? I fuck with who I think real. Okay. I don't, I don't even care where they from. Like if I if I think you being honest about what you rapping and your shit hard, I'm gonna fuck with you. Like I don't be judging too much. Like you know, mm-hmm. as long as I feel like uh, a, a nigga telling his truth. Mm-hmm. I can fuck with you. Mm-hmm. Like I like Savvy Third, cut hard. Feel me? Hell yeah, Savvy hard as fuck. He was one of my first interviews that I ever did. Mm-hmm. He was like interview ten, and I got like a hundred something. Oh, you got a hundred something? Y'all yeah. gotta go check your shit out. Yeah, Savvy. He he was one of my first interviews ever. He was actually one of my first mainstream artists that let me interview him back yeah. like three years ago when I very first started doing interviews. We got a banger that's about to come out. Dope song. But I know y'all gonna be good together. I got, I got he's he's with, ratchet, you're yeah. ratchet, y'all got that good shit. I got shit with so many rappers, like and and I'm putting more shit together. Uh you feel me? My boy Lil P about to pull up right yeah. now. Oh, three Greedo, so many people. I got hella shit coming out. I got it's gonna be lit. I'm putting I'm just putting it together, you feel me? Okay. I think it's working, man. I'm trying to Trying to Where be, do you I'm trying to be a see, great. You feel me? One of the greats. Where do you want to see yourself with the music shit? Like, what are your future goals and like what you wanna, what you wanna do? And you know, what advice you got for your supporters out there that want to do the same shit as you? Man, I wanna. That's another thing too. Like sometimes, like I might not even take it where I'm taking it to, where I'm trying to take it to. But if I can spark somebody and motivate somebody else to take it, man. I still won. I'm just motivating. Like I don't even know necessarily know what I'm doing, like that. I do, but I don't. Like I don't have no type of like. I'm just going, trying to see how far I can go. So if it's a young nigga in the ghetto watching me, then they can they can, like how I was watching Nip and watching other niggas from the ghetto. Then they'll be like, oh, yeah, no. Like, all right, nigga, I watch that nigga. 
on the corner cell crack nigga to being at the Grammys. Mm-hmm. I know I can do it. You feel me? Type yeah. Shit. So as long as that, then I won at the end of the day. I don't even gotta win the Grammys. As long as I get there and the young that young nigga back in the hood that remember me when I used to sell crack and you know, I feel like I won. Right. Yeah, I'm just that type of nigga. I wanna motivate motherfuckers and inspire people. To, there's a lot of niggas out here that can do shit. If they got to get up off their ass and go do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm going to sit back and just be watching another nigga do it. You do the same shit. Like, you know? Like, I just sit back and watch rapper music videos. Fuck that. I'm going to start making music videos. Right. You know? So right. Like, like, man, fuck why I'm listening to a nigga music. I'm about to go make some music. You know? And that was the best decision I ever made in my life. It made, it made me like, motherfuckers calling me a legend out here. I'm like, what the right. fuck? This shit crazy. How long you how long you been rapping? You said about five years, right? Seriously rapping five years. Five years. And do you feel like you've it's grown from the beginning to now? What? Where you wanted it to? I know it has, Hell but yeah. we know. I gotta still ask you. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. What? Hell yeah. Um uh, man, I can't even complain. Honestly, I thought it would have took longer. Um, right. Like to where I'm at right now. Well the way thought, social media is set up right now. Yeah, I think the know. city love me. I'll be reading the comments, they out for me. Like that I'm one of the ones out here. They like they like root for me hard out here. Like I'm like I'm like one of the city favorites right now. You've sure. been getting your accolades because I seen you on that Thizzler post of all the artists and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yesterday. You've been yeah, yeah. you've been getting yeah, your accolades. How do you, you see the how, comments on that? They was going to bat for me in the kind me and EBK J Bo. They was flooding our name in that bitch. <laughs> Man, they was going to bat for a nigga. What they, they love me. Where else do people love you besides L A. That you were very surprised. Were you surprised about that? A lot of the, uh, Seattle, Seattle loves I wasn't LA surprised rappers. About it, I noticed. I, I went out there for a year, and I lived out there for a couple of years. Okay, back and forth. So I fly from LA back. Like you know, I did that for like three years straight. So no, I didn't surprise them. Mm-hmm. I, I put the groundwork in, kicking in with niggas, going to their hood barbecues. You know, meeting their family, meeting their loved ones. They telling me about Seattle. I'm kicking it in the trap, learning about their culture and mm-hmm. how they move and shit. I done kicked it with niggas from the CD, from the South, the West Side, the North, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Shout out my nigga Johnny, you know? Shout out my nigga Sixer. Shout out, I got some real niggas about the Seattle. I just, you can do that anywhere. They right. just say like, um, for instance, I'm about to do that in Miami next. Cause I'll be seeing like, what's, they always say, what's LA music can't go here, can't go there. But if you put the groundwork in, you like, you know, you gotta right. fly to Miami and be out there, nigga, for nine months working with they artists and tapping in with they culture. It's the way you do things. You ain't gonna just get it done on, on the weekend. Right. You know what I'm saying? You gotta go to work. What do you feel like is the issue right now with LA music? You know, there's a lot of talk. LA music, LA music, LA music. Artists don't want to work with each other. Artists this, artists that. Everybody's, yeah, you know, I'm, crying. Yeah. You know, I'm with everybody. Little what what do you think today? is the issue with LA music and why it's not resonating outside to LA? Because there are some artists. Now, don't get me wrong. There you are a lot truth. of artists that do resonate outside of LA, but there are a lot that they just be stay. like singers though, like Kaylin yeah. for real. Be, yeah, be no more the mainstream t- exactly. It be our singers, Roddy yeah. Rich. Why the rappers don't? Because these niggas don't open up and tell you the truth. They just telling you about. They all acting like they Mayweather. Mm-hmm. Everybody Mayweather flying jets, getting money, and the big boss. They not opening up and telling you, giving you pain like Tupac did. Right. They not opening up like did some, Tupac got something like Dear Mama and shit like that. These niggas not opening up and telling you about their real life, right. how they grew up. Everybody, right. everybody is a fucking a goat, and they and they living in this image where they like just this big dog, right? And they can get somebody killed, and they drive farms. Like, they not really telling you, like, you know, before they got all that. Like, motherfucker want to know, like, the real you. Right. And Do you feel like it's a lack of support amongst L.A. artists within themselves? Within themselves? Like, you versus, um, like, other artists. Not per se you, but you as an L.A. artist. Do you feel like it's a lack of support? Did you mm. have issues with niggas wanting to make songs with you yeah. and shit like that? Have the, you had yeah. any weird sassy. moments yeah. since you've gotten sassy. on? I got a song with everybody. I got a song with Zoe Sama. I got a song with G Perico. I got a song with everybody damn near. Draco, Greedo. But a lot of these niggas are sassy. I'm like, I don't know what it be. Like, you know, I can't really pinpoint what it might be, but I don't see that many niggas working. 
Mm-hmm. You know, but you can't blame a nigga for like a lot of us don't know each other. LA so big, it ain't like we. Like, Do you nah, think it's the gang? I see if nigga, it's that too, and then it's a lot that we don't even know each other. Like mm-hmm. for instance, I grew up way in West LA. I don't even know niggas like that in Compton. I know a few niggas, a few mm-hmm. of them. I don't know that many niggas, but you know what I'm saying. Like so, it's like niggas don't be quick to like. Just link with niggas they don't know, like right? That, you feel what I'm saying, right? Like we, be, LA, LA is pretty big. Now let's not like we just grew up knowing about each other. Hell yeah, we go, we gonna work, get it in. Mm-hmm. But a lot of these niggas, bro, I don't be knowing these niggas until like I see rapping, like on some rap shit. Like, I, I, we don't share the same malls, we don't share the same schools, stores, no nothing. LA is big as fuck. I yeah, would, I would never know if it wasn't rapping. I would never run into these niggas or know these niggas. Mm-hmm. They would never know me. Right. That's how big LA is. You feel me? Right. I never usually give my opinion about that because I always like to say like I run like a media like page, not a media outlet. Yeah. Meaning like I don't vlog and do you know what I mean that type of yeah I don't vlog and do that type of shit. But I do feel like it's a lot of. Hateration, holleration going on with yeah. the rap niggas in LA. I do feel like there's a lot of big egos. Yeah, I feel sure. like everybody not like me, man. Yeah, like you know I mean, I'm like everybody. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do a song with the Cuzos. You heard the Cuzos? Yes, the Cuzo Fives. Yeah, 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 they I'm opened up for Greedo. Them, man, the Were you there that day? No, you weren't there uh, that night. You came the next day. Yeah, I'm yeah, they gonna, opened up the night before. I'm about to fuck with them. I fuck with everybody. I just man, I just how I am. I want to see if you serious. I'm just not trying to give you a verse and you don't put the verse out. Right. Like, if, I'm give, if I give you a verse, at least put it out. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much for. I'm definitely gonna wrap the interview up. I think that we got really in depth in your life and you growing up out here in LA. Have you did an interview that in depth? Um, uh, I don't think so. I got a couple interviews. This you was asking me more like you was really getting more into it. I like that. Like you feel me. You did your shit. I fuck Thank with you. it. Thank you. Thank you. You feel me? Yeah, nah, you definitely... I, was, I had to be careful a little bit. I'm like, hold on, <laughs> I mean, If I feel like something is slick, I'll take nah, it nah, out. Nah, <laughs> nah, nah, not slick. You just, like, you you, you, you you get down to it. You Like, you you a good interviewer. That's what the fans <laughs> be wanting to... You ask the question that the fans be wanting to know. I know what they want to hear, yeah. but I do it in a way to where it's like it doesn't incriminate you. Yeah, or nah, make, for sure. Or make you feel like, what the fuck? Yeah. You know what I mean, bitch? What you just asked. Because I, I watch interviews, and I be mad when niggas just don't want to ask the questions or they get up in the interview and just be acting hella cool. Yeah. Man, get your ass off camera with all that extra cool shit, man. Like, yeah. you just sitting in the interview. No, you I'm gave me a very like good that. interview. You yeah. were very open. But see, me and you have been communicating and we've been talking and we've seen each other at different events. Yeah. I went to your album release party. I saw you at Greedo shit. I seen you at the studio. We've been communicating and we talked for like a whole hour before yeah. the interview. So I knew talking to you on, on camera, it was going to flow the way yeah, it did. Yeah, I kind of just be chilling. I'll be, I'll You're be, actually good energy, I'll watch too. I get positive vibes. Right, and you did. You did. You, you gave it. And you guys, he said this is his last interview. Yeah, I ain't doing no more interviews for at least, like, the next two, three years. Yeah. It's last so, one, man. I know, this is, you know, I get all the exclusives, y'all. How did I get so lucky to get the last big, sad interview? That's why I did it with you. I ain't going to lie. I'm going to fuck with you. I know you was trying to get one, probably, like, man, you, like, was it like a year ago? Maybe? Yeah, like a year Probably ago. Maybe a little bit longer And we than talked, that. Uh, but yeah, I don't know saying, what they happened. They kept taking my Instagrams. Oh, that's what it was. I'm on my like damn near 15 page. Yeah. This this page I got, I don't even have. I said he ain't gonna run months. from me. I'm popping up at his album release party, <laughs> nigga. Uninvited, nigga. Nah, I went with Casso. <laughs> this new page, I only got. The, I only been having my new Instagram three months. And you've already turned it up. You already got a cool following. That's that's a, that's a loyal fan base right there. Yeah, they fuck with me for sure. That's a loyal I fuck fan with them, base, man. They fuck with me, man. Thank you so much for doing the interview. Um, I appreciate. You can it. let the people know. Your Instagrams, your social medias. I'm going to put all the links in the bio so they can click it. They can just go yeah. right to the bio and click your shit, but you can still shout it out. Let them know what you have out already, what you have coming out, any business ventures, anything. Yeah. Any shout outs you're going to All my social medias is Big Side 1900 on Twitter, Instagram, Big Side 1900. Man, uh, shit, make sure. I'm still promoting that Dia Legend, man. I, 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 20, I 2023 album of the year, Die a Legend. You feel me? I'm willing to put money up. Like, find another rap album that independently 
You feel me? Like, I'm like, take away the numbers. Motherfuckers be going off these numbers. Right. I'm talking about use your ear. Go play them songs 1 through 25 and tell me I'm lying. You feel me? Straight up. Tell me I'm lying if I ain't dropped one of the best albums this year. Die a legend. That's all. You feel me? I ain't got too much to say. I just want motherfuckers to hear that. Cause I feel like that shit got looked over a little bit. Motherfuckers, motherfuckers steady going off of these numbers. and Right. First Lee said, man, for, take away all that. Go use your ear and hear the album. Tell me Make I'm sure lying. you guys stream that. Die a legend. What do you have coming out for the future? Man, I got something coming out. Greedo, we've been working on. I got something coming out with Shout the baby out to my song, Gorillas. I just been working. I got um. I'm really trying to focus on my solo shit, my own shit. I'm, I'm like, I, like I did a lot. Of, I've been helping a lot of my homies and doing hella features. And like I did a, earlier this year, I did a deal where I was doing five hundred dollar features. Feel me? I did like mm-hmm. I, I did hundred and twenty of them bitches in two months. Damn. <laughs> then I turned around recently and just did it again for seven hundred. Turned around and did like thirty of them. So this year I just did I did a gang of rapping and helping other motherfuckers. Right. This year, you know what I'm saying. So next right. going into the next year, strictly doing big sad songs, no features. Okay. I'm, I'm not putting nobody on my. Well, you gonna give me a song for my. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. Yeah, I'm gonna give you a song for your tape. I'm saying, as far as like my albums. Yeah, no, you, I know, I know what I, you meant. I was just yeah, talking don't, shit. You can't expect, <laughs> don't expect to see like no big names on my like. No, I mean, if a big name artist want to give me a feature, cool. Right. But I, I doubt you feel me. You just expect to hear me. Right. More, more of my albums are just me, solo shit. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah, you guys, he will be uh, being on Free World Order Volume 2. I don't know what I'm going to call it. I might name it Free World Order again because it's based off the channel. Mm -hmm. But I might name it something different. But regardless to what, it's coming out under Free World Order Records. So he will be on Volume 2. Volume 1's already out. Make sure you guys are buying them hard copy CDs and make sure y'all are streaming it on all DSPs. It's one through twenty one of all hot shit. Shout you want to shout out, yeah. Kelly Herbs, man. Shout out to Spill Lotto too, because y'all Lotto. gave me a good pack to give yeah, to him, and he sure. enjoyed it. So shout, shout out, out to Spill y'all. Lotto. Shout out Kelly Herbs, man. Shout out all my fans, because without y'all, none of this shit would even be possible at all. Yeah. Lay off. Do you have um any message you want to give to them? Any any inspiration you want to say to them um, before we sign off? Man, save your money, man. And don't give it to no female. Make her pay. Nah. <laughs> the lean is starting to hit him, y'all. I can feel it. Nah, look. Let me really say some real shit. I'm going to tell y'all some real shit, though, right? Watch your surroundings. Save your money, man. And, and do something positive And try to make a change. You feel me? Because if you, you you might not be able if you What Tupac say? I might not change the world, but I could be that voice to spark somebody out there that might could change the world. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And thank you so much, Big Sad, for doing the uh, interview. Love. And making know. me the final interview. And, you know, just just like showing love because we you guys understand. We've been talking about doing this interview for like for a, a month now. Yeah, yeah. It's been like a month or After two. After this they gotta hear it in the music. Uh, yeah. Ain't no more interviews. They're gonna have to, anything I'm I gotta address or say is gonna be in my music for sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And you guys, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for following the artists, listening to the music, viewing the interviews. You know, this next upcoming year, we're going to bring all the hot shit. I'm dropping more tapes, more write-ups. Right are coming back in January. And, um, yeah, I'm dropping more tapes this year. My A&R game, my ear. You know, I got the gift of gab in my ear. That ear right there. That's, that's that one right there. So, yeah. Signing off. You dig.